In today's example, we're going to be examining the delete face command in Fusion 360. Many of our users don't even know this command exists. When working in the parametric mode of Fusion 360, it doesn't exist on the toolbar. You just have to use your delete key. It's a great feature that can save you a ton of time. And today I'm going to use it on this oldie but goodie, the utility knife example that is included in every single Fusion installation in the sample files. This model is offered as a tutorial example about how to use T-splines along with regular parametric design elements. But one of the things I never liked about it is that it doesn't really tell you how these two halves are supposed to come together. It assumes that both of the halves are either glued together or maybe held together by the grips on the tops and on the back. I'm gonna be adding a screw embossment. This means I'm gonna be putting a piece of material between both halves that is then connected by a threaded screw. Since I don't want the screw head to stick above the surface of the utility knife, I'm gonna be using a countersunk hole which will keep the outer surface smooth. To do this efficiently, I'll take advantage of the timeline, rolling back the history to the first point in the timeline where both halves of the utility knife are still one body. You can see here we have three bodies, some of which are made invisible, but the main body is still one part. In the analysis tab, I'll create a cut view to prove to you that the inside has been hollowed out already using the shell command, making this an ideal point for us to add our screw embossment. To place it in space, I'll take advantage of the existing sketches in the part. First, I'll make them visible and then double click on the existing schematic to edit it. Although there's a lot of information in the sketch, all I need to do here is to create a circle located about at this point here. This will be the cylinder of plastic that extends between both halves of the model and into which we will place a countersunk threaded screw hole. Once done with this, all we need to do is use the extrude command to create the cylinder desired. If we make it symmetric on both sides and simply pull it out, the system will assume we wish to cut holes into both halves of this model. That's not the case. So we'll need to change the operation to join because we want to have a new volume of material that is connected to the existing volumes of material on both sides. You'll want to be sure that the cylinder itself extends beyond the edges of the grip. This technique is usually called overbuilding and it's very common in surfacing techniques. Build it long enough so that it extends beyond the edges and perhaps a bit extra in case anybody ever makes changes to this model to make it a little bit fatter. We'll be deleting this extra material later, but before we do, let's create that threaded hole by using the hole command in Fusion 360. If you click on the flat surface at the end of the cylinder, the hole will be placed at exactly the point on which you've clicked. Drag it away and you'll be able to snap it back to the center of that cylinder exactly where you want it. At this point, all you'll be doing is adjusting the size and form of your threaded hole. You'll need to have a countersunk hole with the countersunk just big enough to fit your screw head. It should be deep enough so that the head of the screw doesn't protrude beyond the outer surface of the utility knife. And at the threaded end, you wanna make sure you have a minimum wall thickness on the other side of the handle. All these sizes will vary depending on the size of the screw that you wanna put in. But at the end, you should have something like this. You'll have an extra bit of material with a countersunk threaded screw going through it. And all you have to do now is select these two surfaces and press the delete key. Fusion will heal the surfaces remaining automatically. While this is a simple example, Fusion can do the same for much more complicated geometry. So try it out sometime. On the other side, the process is the same. Just select these two surfaces here and not the inner surface and press the delete key. Fusion will figure out on its own what it needs to do to keep the model together and a solid volume all at the same time. Keep in mind that if you do the same procedure in the surfacing environment with Infusion, you will simply delete those faces and will no longer have a watertight solid, which can also be useful. Now we have a countersunk bore within our boss, which allows us to screw both halves of this model together. If we turn on the cut view again though, we'll see that that cylinder in the middle is still a straight cylinder. This would cause problems getting it out of a mold, so we might want to put a draft angle on this. 
The easiest way to do this would be to go back into the model and add a draft angle. If we go to the timeline and move it one step forward until we have the split between both halves, we'll have an easy way to create that draft angle. Using the draft command, we can then go in and select that central face as the pull face. Selecting the surface of one cylinder will allow us to show the draft angle being applied, in this case, five degrees. The other half of the cylinder also needs to be selected, of course, and to do this efficiently, I'll turn on the other half and I'll show you another little known feature of Fusion 360. By holding your left mouse button for two seconds or longer, you'll get a multi-select window which will allow you to select everything that is behind your cursor at the moment, even if it's not visible on screen. We can change the draft type to symmetry and then flip its direction to make sure that the pull out of the mold is in the right way. This multi-select feature of Fusion 360 is really powerful, but unfortunately, because it's not on the toolbar, people don't know it's there. Remember this the next time you're trying to click onto something that you can't easily see. It'll save you a lot of trouble. The final step is an easy one. Simply roll the timeline all the way back to the end and everything should rebuild as normal. Only this time with a screw embossment. Turning off one half of the model, we can examine the interior cutting assembly. Using the existing Fusion 360 joints, we can pull back the assembly and see if the clearances still make sense. If they hadn't, all we would need to do is go into that initial layout sketch and change the position of the boss. I hope this quick tutorial on how to use the delete face command within Fusion 360 was useful for you. And as always, I wish you the best of luck.